Hey guys, so I just did this quick little kind of like going out late afternoon meetup makeup look. Um, I happen to have plans for an outside get together today, which is like starting to happen. Um, so I just thought I'd like do my makeup like not too fussy, not too much, just to kind of like throw something on to make myself feel good. So um, anyway, if you want to see how I got to this, it's sort of like a nice, easy, kind of like casual smoky eye for daytime or late evening or late day, whatever the case may be. Um, keep watching and we'll go step by step. All right, guys. So I figure I'll just start. My hair is pulled way back because I just like it off my face when I am doing my makeup. And I'm going to start. This is like a little tinted moisturizer. It's an SPF 41. I'm like almost at the end of it, but I'm using it all. And I mostly put it on my cheeks because I'll usually wear a hat and sunglasses um, but I feel like I get it I get the sun on my cheeks so I'm just doing a little bit of that and I kind of just bring it everywhere the sun may hit like it's kind of cloudy today but I use it regardless because it's just like a, a good habit to get into and you'll see if you watch any of my other videos it's kind of like a mainstay it's kind of like in my routine every day so I want to do something that's kind of like not too fussy. Um, it's rare that I have plans these days because of the coronavirus, but people are starting to kind of like socialize outside on their decks and patios and backyards and stuff like that. So I have one of those things tonight, so that should be nice. So it's kind of like, oh my God, I have a reason to put makeup on. Not that I really ever need a reason, but um, it's kind of nice that it's like just kind of nice to have a place to go. So I'm going to start with a little bit of this L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation. This is nothing new. I want to say it came out maybe last year, but it is a fantastic drugstore foundation. This one came out last summer, I want to say. I have a few colors. I'm actually going to use 430 today, which is kind of like the middle color that I have because I'm starting to get a little bit of tan and I've been doing a little bit of fake tan here and there. So I'm going to, um, what, well, why it's so good is because it is super, super long lasting and it's very thin but it's got good coverage now those are the great things about it it does contain denatured alcohol which I've noticed a lot of thinner consistency foundations do um, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world I moisturize I take pretty good care of my skin but some skincare people will tell you um, you know avoid anything with alcohol so you just have to be kind of mindful but the smell isn't too much um, and I just think it makes my skin look really good but not too makeupy. So I really like this um, flat, really tight kabuki brush. This is a BH Cosmetics brush. It came in a set, and it's a great set, and I just particularly love this brush with this foundation. And I'm going to kind of start it on my chin and start at the center. There's a little bit of a smell to this foundation, but it, once it dries down, it's really not bad at all. And like I said, like I don't want to look fussy. Like I spent an hour and a half doing my makeup, which I mean, I have nothing against that, but I just want to be kind of casual and easy. And this is like a good like coming out makeup, you know what I mean? You can see it's a little darker than my skin. So I'm just going to like bring it up to my ears and bring it down my neck, but then you can see that the match will happen so that eventually it actually all makes sense. I'm going to kind of take this over my brow bone. I'll do my brows later. So I'm going to leave it there because I'm going to go in with concealer and powder and bronzer and those layers will add up. So I can always go back and add a little more and like stipple it in places that I want more coverage. But I think this is a good place for now. Okay, so got that buffed in. Um, just kind of like medium coverage. I would say light to medium coverage. And I am going to start with the eyes. Once I've got the foundation on, I'm going to do the concealer and the rest of it. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see that I kind of bounce around. And I do that with clients too. It's sort of like a, it's like a thought process. So sometimes I'll just like start with an eye and I'll finish the eye and then I'll go to the other eye. It kind of bounces around. It kind of just like depends on what the journey is that day. I don't know. I don't really have like um, a method. If I'm doing a very dark smoky eye, then it's always both eyes first. I'm going to get a little bit of this, um, and I'm going to get a little bit of this eye primer underneath because we'll probably blend out a little shadow under there, and that way it just won't um, kind of break up and it'll just wear better. 
So, you know, I wasn't really sure what I was going to use, but since it's here, I'm going to use this e.l.f. palette. It is a $15 palette, so it's very affordable, especially for all these colors you get. This is the e.l.f. New Classics, and I think it's fantastic. I like that there are some warms, but it's not overly warm. There are some cools because I am not tan and I don't have blue eyes, and I feel like if you're not medium to tan skin and you don't have blue eyes, like these warm tones, they're not the most flattering, at least not on me. So I like something a little more neutral cool sometimes. I mean, I'll do the warms, but I kind of have to have a tan for them to look good. So I'm going to start with this cream color. It's just like a matte bone color. And I'm going to do, this is what I do a lot, is I'll take a fluffy brush and I'll just get this like in the crease and above, or really just above the crease because I have a very deep set eye, so that just makes the rest of the shadow kind of go on and sort of wear a little better. It's not really giving much coverage, but that's okay. I really just want to make sure that that base I put down is a little softer and smoother. So that's really the goal there. You're not going to see much difference. Um, and then I'm going to take, it looks like these two are kind of like my crease color choices if you're going that route. I want to get a smaller brush. I'm going to use this Delian Tools brush. This is the 783 Small Taper. And this is a really nifty, it's such a cheesy word. This is a really cool uh, line of brushes. It's their Golden Triangle Collection. I think they're wonderful. I just love the way they feel. Like, do you guys remember like in kindergarten or first grade or grade school really, um, on your pencils you'd put that like rubber sort of triangle and you'd slide it onto your pencil so you didn't get the writing bump? That's kind of what it feels like because it's this triangle shape so you can kind of just like rest it against your middle finger and just kind of go to work. So I, there's something really satisfying about that. I'm gonna mix a little two of those colors together. And I don't want it to get out of hand, so I'm going to tap off the brush, and I'm just going to start to give myself a little bit of a crease. And you can see they're really pigmented, so I think less is more. And what I have to do is I have to like make sure that as I'm putting it here, there could be a whole bit of no color there because of the deep crease that I have. So I have to kind of like lift my brow and like really get in there with this tapered brush. This is another reason why the taper brush is good. Now be careful here during this step. I've seen myself do this and I've seen other makeup artists do it. They take it too far out and then the shape would be fine if you were gonna leave your eyeshadow out there, but then they're gonna go and clean up because you can do that when you haven't done your foundation, assuming that was the case today. But I have found that the more I try to keep it inward, the better my end result looks. Um, unless you're like definitely and intentionally drawing it out, try not to get too outside here because it, sometimes it just looks really um, amateur, dare I say it? Like you don't see the major makeup artists that we're all trying to emulate like Lisa Eldridge for example, you don't see her making a big mess here and having to go and clean up, like it just doesn't happen. So um, I try to just like kind of keep it close. Of course you can clean up a little bit if you get way out, but don't go too far because then it just, it's gonna look kind of mm, tacky. So anyway, I'm just gonna blend that in. And honestly, I'm the kind of person, I would do that, a liner and a mascara, and I think you could be fine. I sometimes like the simplicity of just doing like a little color in the crease, blending it out, and then polishing everything else up. But because we can, we will, um, I'm going to get, I want to get like a nice skinny brush. I'm going to use this nice flat stiff brush. This is like an eyeliner brush essentially, and I'm going to dip into Muse. And I'm actually going to mix a little bit of this sparkly gray with it because I want a little more coolness and a little more smokiness. So I'm just going to tap that here. We may go back and wet the brush. We'll kind of see. I don't think we need to. These shadows are so good. So the thing about drugstore shadows is sometimes they're really good and they're at a drugstore price, and sometimes they're really not good, and they're at a drugstore price. So it really depends on that particular palette, what that brand is using for that palette, because 
all elf shadows and all the palettes across the board are not going to be the same quality. And that also goes for Maybelline and L'Oreal and all the brands. So you have to kind of do your research, watch the reviews. That's what I do. And I got, I heard a lot of people that I respect their opinion and I trust them say that they like this. And I have to say, I agree. So I'm just going to kind of drag this almost like I'm doing a liner, but I'm totally going to blend it out so it doesn't have to be perfect. There's like a little bit of glitter in it. I like it. And then I'm going to go back with that tapered brush and I'm just going to like zhuzh it. So whatever color is left will help to blend it out. So it just kind of softens it. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another flat stick brush. This is a 239, so not quite as flat, not quite as stiff, and it's a MAC 239. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to get a little more of those two colors, and I'm actually going to like tap them off on my hand, and I'm going to do a little more zhuzhing. Yeah, and I like that. So we kind of laid the color down with a skinny brush, and then we kind of blended it out. And there's not really any fall down happening. I just like wanted to check to make sure I wasn't not seeing it. There's really not a lot of fall down happening. So that's pretty cool. It's a great um, palette. I feel like this is probably all you would need. There's like enough color in there that you could get a little creative. And then what I'm gonna do before I go to the other side, I'm gonna take this cooler color. This is called Charmer. This is, this is a color that's got my name all over it. It's almost like a purpley mauve kind of crease color, and I'm just gonna kind of go over the whole thing, and it's gonna kind of cool it down because things can tend to look very warm on me very quick. And when I say warm, I mean orange, and that just totally did it for me. Notice I'm being pretty top heavy. I've been watching a lot of uh, New Girl, like the old, you know, that old show from like 10 years ago. I think it's been almost 10 years ago. Um, and I love how they always have her makeup super top heavy, lashes and everything. It's just like a really flattering look, especially on me because I have big eyelids and I'm almost 42. So I kind of like to not go to, you know, too much on the bottom. I say do whatever you want, but I just feel like on me, top heavy is just more flattering. So now I'm just taking that same fluffy brush and I grabbed a little bit of that first cream color and I think we're good for now. We'll definitely have some touching up to do, but we're gonna go ahead and leave it there and I'll go into the second eye. And I find if I do one eye and then I do the second eye, it's so much faster because I make all my decisions on one eye and then all I have to do is do the other eye. Whereas if I'm going back and forth, the decision making is like a little, it just takes a little too long. So I'll be right back, two eyes done, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm back with two, upper eyelids done anyway and then I also went ahead and filled in my brows because I just feel like it makes everything look a little bit better and you can kind of start to see the look tape shape a little bit more take shape a little more um, I'm gonna clean up although there's really not much to clean um, here and here just with my foundation brush and now it's time to go in with a little concealer under the eyes etc so I think I'll go ahead and use this is NARS Affogato, which is pretty light. It's one of the lightest they make. So I'm also going to add a little bit of vanilla. Um, I'm definitely on the fairer side, and I also find with NARS, a lot of their colors tend to be very yellow. So if it's something under the eye or it's going under the eye, um, I need to go a little pinker. I'm kind of a neutral, um, neither too cool nor too warm. Nor too warm. I can't really speak today. Um, but I find a lot of their foundations look very yellow on me. But they've expanded their shade range, I should also know. So um, they have colors like Yukon, which is definitely a pinker undertone. And um, it's great because then I feel like they're kind of getting everybody in the whole spectrum. So a little under eye concealer, and I'm just gonna kind of feather that down here. Up all this in. Might need a little bit more right here. Get add a little lightness there. And I don't want to buff it away, so I'm going to use my ring finger and just kind of bring this down. Okay, good. 
all right, coming together, and it's not taking too long, which is always, always a bonus. I'm gonna go and put a little bit of brow gel in. This, it's not that my brows are unruly and need setting in place, but I find that it helps keep the product that I use to make them thicker and fuller looking stay in place. So it definitely has a couple of purposes there. Before I bronze and do all that sort of thing, I'm just gonna lightly set my makeup with this RCMA No Color Powder. You've probably seen they have the one in that like shaker um, jar. This one was sent to me um, in one of those beauty boxes. Camera Ready Cosmetics is a wonderful website that does mostly, they're mostly uh, like a makeup artist supply. So they have discounts and they have, um, you know, all the products that a makeup artist or even a lot of hair products that a hairdresser might use or somebody that does both. Um, anyway, my point is they have this beauty box and they send you these products if you sign up for it and it's like a really good deal. So you know me. So I did that and I, I discovered some really great things in that. I only got it once because I think I started right before Corona and then they, they didn't have one during the coronavirus. I think it was supposed to be a March box or maybe even a June box, but hopefully on the next, uh, they do them quarterly. So hopefully next time they will be able to fulfill. Okay, because they have really good stuff in there. That's my point. So I'm using a little bit of the Marc Jacobs bronzer. This is one you don't see it as much. You usually see the white one, the white uh, compact. This is Tantric, the O Mega Bronze with an O exclamation. It's just big. It's a great color for me in the summer. And I'm just using this fluffy brush because I just kind of want to add a little, just like a little bronzer slash contour. I feel like it's Scott Barnes that has taught us all that you can kind of use a warmer bronzer as a contour in some ways. I mean, I think it depends on the shape of your face, but when he showed us all how to do Tati's makeup, and Tati already has like really good bone structure, a very slim face, so she doesn't need a lot of like shadow inducing contour, but he used these way warmer colors than I think I was initially taught to use. and. I mean, it's Scott Barnes, he does J-Lo's makeup, he's amazing. But I love that style, and depending on the way your face is, I think it absolutely works. And then you can kind of let like your bronzer and your contour kind of like be one and the same. All right, so I don't wanna to go too much. Anytime you're filming, I think it sort of erases some of the makeup, so I have to make sure I'm looking in like a real life mirror as well as the monitor so that I don't go too much. I'm like, oh my god, I can't go out with all this makeup because I look like a weirdo. I mean, not that that's ever stopped me before, but okay. So I'm going to do just a little blush. I'm actually really drawn to this one right now. Um, Mac and Patrick Star came out with a few collections, but this was one of the collections and it's like a bronzer and a blush duo. And I'm actually gonna use that blush. It sort of reminds me of NARS Orgasm, which I don't have anymore. Um, I had it a long time ago and I probably used it till it like hit a lot of pan and I probably got old and I probably didn't repurchase it because I have so many other ones. But yeah, I'm just going to do a little bit of that, and then I find, and I always use like the same big brush. Some people like a smaller brush for blush. I just like to use the same one that I use for bronzer after the bronzer in that order. And I'm just going to kind of hit the cheeks. And kind of like along here, almost like I got a little sun in my forehead, because that's where I would get a little burned. And I want to bring it down here and just kind of like make sure everything's kind of blended. This is like happening really fast. I'm really happy with that. Um, so let's see, what else do we have to do? We have to do lashes, and we have to figure out if we need a little more eyeliner. And I think, yeah, I think, yeah. So I'm actually going to use this Pixi eyeliner. It's like a nice chocolatey brown. It's called Endless Silky Eye Pen by Pixi. And this is in black caviar. But it's definitely not a black black, which is why I like it. Black black is usually a little too much for me. This is like a dark, warm brown, but very dark. And I'm going to put that into the upper lash line. I'm actually going to sharpen it. These are very soft. So I do find I have to sharpen them basically every time. Um, I go through those sharp, like those pencils that you have to sharp very often because I don't like them to get too dull. And I'm just going to kind of poke this into the lash line. And it will transfer a little bit to the lower lash line on its own. And I just let it. And I'll do the second side. Now, like, 
there's going to be, since this product is so soft, there's going to be a good amount of product sort of like smushed into the lashes, and I mean that in a good way. So I'm going to take that same brush, this is the one that I used for the shadow as the liner, and I'm just going to kind of like zhuzh it so that it's going to be a little darker at the lashes, and it's going to kind of like fade in to that eyeliner that we did with the eyeshadow. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not sure it makes sense to me, and I know when I said it, but, so you have eyeshadow, but at the base of the lash, you have eyeliner, and then it's automatically transferred. I don't know if you can see that. It's transferred because you blink constantly, and I, I welcome that because you can actually use it. I'm looking for, like, a pencil brush. How do I have all these brushes here, and I don't have a pencil brush? Hang on. Let me get one. You could use a pencil brush or, like, a brush like this. These are like two in that golden triangle collection. I'm just going to take this one. You can see it's like round, but it's soft, but it's dense. I'm just going to kind of like zhuzh a little. And I'm going to zhuzh a little here because I don't want it to be too much. And we haven't done mascara yet, so keep that in mind. And then just to keep things consistent, I'm going to go back with the bronzer that I used, and I'm going to take a little bit of that bronzer with that same brush, and I'm just going to kind of warm it up. This was like a little more eyeliner than I was planning on the bottom lashes, but it transferred, and it's very inky, so it's like, all right, let's just go with it. That's the kind of day it's going to be. Fine. And then I just want to like tap out any kind of like creasing that may have happened. Okay, now you'll see like I don't do a whole lot of contouring on my nose or anything like that. Like my nose is kind of long. I don't really need to make it longer. What I can do if I wanted to shorten it a little bit is I could just take that bronzer and I could kind of just like put it on the tip of my nose just to create a little bit of a shorter nose. And then some people do it like here and here. I don't really think I need to make my nose any longer or skinnier. It's kind of longer and skinny enough. So... I can just do a little bit there if I want. I rarely do that, but just to give myself a little shape. Why not? It's a makeup tutorial on YouTube. Why not? Um, all right, so before I do the lips, I just want to spritz everything with a setting spray. I like MAC Fix, Mac Fix Plus. I like um, Urban Decay. Um, they're different. I like them for different reasons. I'm using Urban Decay Chill, which is the setting spray, but it's cooling and hydrating. And I find that I, I welcome hydrating right now at my age more than ever. Also makes your makeup just like look better, last better. Win-win situation. And you always want to make sure you cap it. You can actually get a double cap situation with that. You get the little cap and the big cap. So use them because they will keep everything working well. Um, and then we need to finish the eyes with mascara. It's like you notice there's like something, there's just something missing. And it's mascara, like mascara will always look better. So I'm gonna curl and I'm gonna put on mascara. I have a feeling you know how to do mascara, so I'm gonna do that off camera and then we'll come back in with a lip and we'll just talk about it. Okay, so curlers are in just for a few minutes to like smooth out my hair. I've done mascara, so we're just gonna do a few little like finishing touches, namely a little bit of shimmer. So I'm gonna grab this color Glamour and I'm actually gonna use it kind of in various parts of my face, not just on my eyes. So I'm gonna take this little brush and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the inner corner. Not like, I don't want it to be like a beaming spotlight. I just want it to be like a little something something. I'm gonna finish with whatever's up under my brow. It's very subtle, but that's what I'm going for. And then I'm going to top it off. I'm going to do a little bit, just like to add a little bit of glow, but like, I don't want it to be like, boom, you know, it's just not my aesthetic personally. And do a little bit on this one too. Yeah. So this shadow, it actually works really nice as a highlight. Like if you were traveling, I don't think you would need to worry about bringing an extra highlight. This would be, I think, even though it's like not a tiny palette, I think this would be a really good palette to try with. Also, this is totally unrelated. These little Smashbox palettes, I got a few of them in that Camera Ready Cosmetics um, 
it's like the monthly or you know the quarterly subscription box and those were really great for travel they had like a cheek one and two eye ones and Smashbox, speaking of Smashbox, they're just like one of those really, really underrated brands. They're so good quality-wise, um, but I just don't feel like they're really talked about a lot. But they're an amazing, I mean, their shadows are amazing, their foundations are good, or really good. Um, I don't know why you don't hear like more about Smashbox. All right, I need a little more mascara after that. And then we keep the lips real simple. I've been mixing these two together. Um, this is Mickey's Nude. It's like a peachy nude. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of this matte one. This is called Kylie, and it's like a little cooler. It kind of reminds me, what is the MAC color? I'll think of it. Or I'll have to turn around and see which one it was. Yeah, faux. Kind of reminds me of faux. And I like a nude because it's just like easier. And then I've been using MAC Lip Gloss in Nymphette. Really nice color for summer. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Orgasm by NARS. It's like a pinky gold kind of shimmer. I think I need to get NARS Orgasm Blush again. I think I just need it. I don't need it, but I feel like I need to have it. Um, and speaking of which, I, I want a little more cheek, so I'm going to go into this NARS blush. And I'm actually going to use a smaller brush. This will give me more of a payoff. This one is called Bumpy Ride, by the way. And it's like cooler, and it's got a little shimmer, so it's going to add a little bling to the cheekbone if I sweep it in that direction. One thing you do have to be careful of, though, if you do use a shimmery blush, it will highlight like any kind of pores or texture that you may have. So just be, you know, methodical about where you place it. But this also brings me to my next point. Once you put on your lipstick, you may find you need to adjust the blush. Either bring it up, bring it down. In my case, I usually need to add a little blush right after lipstick. And then again, I'm just gonna kinda boom, 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 boom. And so you guys, I think we are done. I'm gonna take out my hair, obviously, obviously. Um, but it's like really simple and easy and I think it's kind of appropriate for like whatever, um, whatever you felt like it was appropriate for its makeup, in my opinion. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, if you do the makeup look, what you found, what you liked, what you didn't, how it worked. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.